of the highest level. And for Huber, her first time. It's interesting, Bruce. It's the third time that these two have played since Monica started her comeback. They played in the Canadian Open and also again at the U.S. Open. So in all three tournaments that they've played together, Sydney Huber did not play a couple of weeks ago, but they've ended up facing one another. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not that might favor Huber, that she might be a little more comfortable with the notion of playing Monica Sellis, a little more used to uh, the patterns of Sellis. It's an unusual uh, occurrence, really, because we've seen so often in this tournament well-known players playing one another for the first time. And yet, in the four tournaments that Monica's come back, she's faced Uncle Huber on three occasions now. Hits the ball. It's Leanne White. Conducting the coin toss. And Pam, as I said in the preview, I, th I think the start for Huber is so important here because Monica hasn't lost a set to anchor in their six matches. Some of the sets have been tight, but she must get away quickly. What a scene here with all the photographers. and well, Bruce, it would be great if she does get away to a fast start, but if you look at Huber's past record, she, she gets off a slow start, so she shouldn't get down if she does get off to a slow start. McDonald's profiles, Monica Sellis, the 22-year-old, going for her fourth Australian Open Championship. 34 titles, the most recent in Sydney. And won the French three times, US twice. Youngest Australian Open winner ever at 17. Youngest French Open winner ever. Youngest ever to be ranked number one. She's done so much in tennis. And her opponent is from Germany, and it's the woman who has really fallen under the shadow of Steffi Groff, several years younger, but she's really bursting through. She's inside the top 10 for the first time in her career, ranked number nine, seated number eight here with nine career titles. In 1995, she won Leipzig. She reached the fourth round of the Australian Open, Wimbledon, the French, and the US. So she reached her seating in all of her grand slams. And the umpire for today's women's final is Leanne White. There's a scene, Monica Sellis and Anka Huber. There will be a full house today. People uh, will be streaming into Flinders Park in the next uh, few minutes. I'm excited, Pam. It's a great occasion. And I really do feel that we're going to have a final here. I'm not sure that Monica is as dominant as she was. And I think Anka can seize her chance today. Well, I think the fact that there's been so many opponents that have found a way to get in a position to win matches. Davenport with a match point the other day, Chanda Rubin. Even the first set here with... Julie Allard earlier in the week. So she should feel confident. That should give her confidence. Well, Celis has uh, come through as you'd expect until the semi final. Didn't drop a set until she played Chanda Rubin. Eva Mayoli. There were some good rallies, but in the end it was 6 1, 6 2. But Rubin was a fascinating match. Ended up indoors. Rubin, remember, led 5 3 in the third set in 30 15 and served a double fault going for one down the middle. So it was a very close call. And Anka Huber didn't really have too much more difficulty, but until uh, the quarterfinals, Conchita Martinez, who was the number two seed, struggled early and then dominated. Again, dropped the opening set against Kutzer in the semis and then ran away with a third. Sellers to serve. Play.
extremes of the court, getting near the sideline. That was something that Monica Sellis mastered several years ago, and she still does it well, but it's that kind of extreme shot that wins you points. Hoover's coach told me beforehand that he was going to instruct Hoover not to give Monica too many angles. This is what she does here, and Monica goes with a one-hander, a great angle winner. the Celeses, Esther and Caroli. game but Monica holds one game to love first set welcome back Monica Sellis and Anka Huber Sellis holding served to 30 in the opening game later today the women's doubles final Mary Jo Fernandez who we can see there will be playing with Lindsay Davenport against Chanda Rubin and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario so sitting it out and relaxing. Hooper to serve. Speaking of Mary Jo, one time here she lost to Monica in the semifinals 9-7 in the third. That is Anka Huber's brother, Frank, and coach wearing the hat just below, Zoltan Zaharski. Wendy Turnbull down at uh, courtside. Just your early impressions, Wendy, of how the two women have settled down. Well, I think Uncle Hooper looks very uh, good out there. She doesn't seem to be uh, too nervous and uh, very much on her toes and uh, ready to pounce. Monica Sells, you have to be willing to step up immediately in a rally when the opportunity presents themselves and as Wendy says, pounce.
A key to this match for Huber will be how her forehand can withstand the pace of Monica Sellis. The backhand is the steadier side and does a little more damage as well. How can the forehand hold up and will it? It's a nice fit for Anka Huber because with the lefty serve going out wide, it's to her stronger side, the two-handed side, and this time she takes it up the line. She missed that one going straight up the center, which was another part of the game plan when I spoke to Anka Huber's coach. It takes some up the center, taking away the angle. Holds again to 30. It's two games to one in the opening set. There's a scene outside centre court at Flinders Park in Melbourne. People still coming into the final. It will be a packed house. It's been a bright start, some heavy hitting. And Kahuba and Monica Sellers' games going with serve. Just waiting for everybody to be seated and settled. Hans Klosser, the German national Fed Cup coach. Often see him watching Steffi Groff's match. Appreciating the first brilliant rally of this match. <laughs> Seen some good ones, but that was an extra level of intensity. Huber all day long if she's going to win this match. Taking her out wide with a serve and then smacking the two-hander to the open.
corner. We've seen Monica's opponents push her back beyond that baseline many times, especially this week. In that time, Huber accomplished just that. Some great defense from Monica in that rally, and she missed the easy one, which is often the way. Second game point. game for Hoover because Sellis won the biggest point in the game at 15 all and it was a memorable game in all and Hoover was able to hold so significant I think early in this match one brilliant rally and uh, the hitting down there I'd be interested from Wendy's point of view I mean they just seem to be hitting the ball so hard I mean is Hoover match matching Sellis' strength off the ground oh most definitely and uh, the thing that is impressive is uh, Hoover's movement around the court at the moment that's making Monica go with a one hand on both sides often early and that's a great sign for Huber the more times you can get Monica off the two hands the trick there Pam is to keep her off the two hands but try and keep the angles down it's a fine balance you're exactly right chance here love 30 making the most of a short second serve Game well, a couple of double faults for Monica Sillis and Hoover gets the first break in the final. Great feeling in the stadium. I think everybody's realised that this is a contest that Anka Huber has an outstanding chance. She has the first break of what's been a high standard final against Monica Sellis. And Bruce, I'll be very surprised if in this game or very soon Monica doesn't start to take it to another level, which she often does when she's behind. Sideline. 
Monica's are more coming down the center of the court. She's not making Anki uncomfortable enough. This one here, Anki's very comfortable on, and she goes for the winner. But I think it's a sign of a lack of confidence, because there she tried to step up. She tried to go, and she did successfully with the return, and then she followed up with her second shot and missed wide. I don't see a confident Monica Sellis right now. Leanne White saying it's good. Wendy, uh, you're closer than us. Did you get a look at it? Well, I thought it was definitely good. And uh, I think Monica's just feeling a little nervous at the moment and just hoping that the ball was Thank called you. out. But it certainly looked good to me. So a game point to consolidate the break. Bruce and Pam, the one thing that I noticed sitting courtside is that Monica, uh, the last couple of matches, has been hitting her ground strokes from a metre or so behind the baseline, which is not where she really likes to hit them from. attacking in so many of the points. ground stroke where she just rips it and you hardly even can move for it. Anka Huber's forehand and, and Monica decides to take it fairly early. It's only her second one of the rally and she just crushes it. What Wendy was speaking about the baseline position of Celis being a meter or so behind the baseline. Huber has a great drop shot. That's the first time we've seen it today, but look for Huber to use again if Celis keeps standing way back there. He did look out, and Huber's unhappy. That's three points for 4-2 that she's been unable to convert. And two double faults in this game. 
You say it time and time again against the number one players, against the champions. You know the big game, and you know you have to win it. It's a mental battle. Anka Hoover facing her first break point of the game decides to gamble with a forehand up the line. some loopy change of pace shots in that rally and that last one on the forehand she was so wide that was another time to use one you need to buy time sometimes General Bill Hayden Cheers. and uh, Huber has gambled twice with the forehand when Silas has had break point and she's been rewarded on both occasions. Very important game now, the longer it goes. Well, Uncle Huber not known for her service winners but that was a great first serve. She only has four aces for the whole tournament and only seven service winners. Well, this net court changes the complexion of the point a little bit. Salas was, it did have the upper hand, but that made it a lot easier. Again, so far behind the baseline. It's a different ball game. When Monica Sellis is a couple of meters behind, look at this, from the serve, she's going to be, look how far behind there she is. Seventh juice in this uh, important long game. Remember that Huber has the break, leads 3 2, gunning for 4 2. Six for Anka. 
Rebecca Hoover. She takes control with the forehands. Hoover's the one that's hugging the baseline. There, Monica has a little better position, goes for it, but misses it. Is it difficult to concentrate in such a long game when you're forcing and hoping? Well, the longer it goes and the more game points you've had, the, the more uneasy you get, the more nervous and the harder it is to close out. And Hoover's doing such a great job for the most part on the deuce point. She's only faced two break points. This is her seventh game point. This is where it becomes a real mental struggle. Hits away on the deuce point. Well, that's unbelievable. Five to one that Sellis would only have one backhand winner so far. Misses. Cheers. It's the 22nd point of this rally. There was the game at Wimbledon, the 11th game of the final set between Sanchez Vercar and Graf. That went 30 points. Very seldom do you get a game going this long. Some of the rally took place up the center of the court, and then Monica starts to work her way more and more towards the sidelines. Third break point. Wendy Turnbull sitting down there with the photographers. What a difference 2-4 for Sellis, but now 3-3 three, three makes. Well, at the moment it does sound like a huge difference, but still, um, Uncle Huber has been dictating play in this match, and uh, it's very impressive the way the balls are going over this uh, net. They're really hitting it very hard, but the movement of both players, excellent. But Huber is standing on the baseline or just inside, and uh, that's what Monica Sellis used to do. And it's 11 forehand errors from Anka Huber. The service percentage, Monica sells below 50%. Whether or not that's a little bit of her shoulder problem, Huber's good up at 70, but she needs to pull her number 65 up closer to Sellis' 75. It's 
twice now. We've seen her go down the line with a backhand return for an outright winner. where she gains the offensive position. Twice she went behind Monica Sellis in that rally. Monica had to go with a one-hander, floated it up high, but Hoover's got to start coming to net some, and she did it in this tournament well. She hasn't come to net once today for a winner. And, and on that coming to net play in the tournament before this match, 70% of the time Huber came to net, she won the point. It was 62 out of 89 times. So she's got to get in there some. Anka Hoover is going to start off after this drop shot right here. It's not quite short enough, but she reads it from Monica. You have to have that disguise. So Monica holds and cannot happy with the call, but look right and sell us four games to three. front of Flinders Park, the National Tennis Centre and Centre Court on a cloudy day, but favourable conditions for the players. Bruce, why were, why were those two late? I mean, they've missed some great action. What they, were they doing? They must have heard how good it was, seen it on the television, have dashed in, said we can't resist this because it's been a final of the highest quality to date. Been going close to 40 minutes, Huber serving with new balls. It's been a break each. It's three games to four. Saying, now, why couldn't she have just started to run for that anyway? But it's because of the disguise from Anka Huber. And Monica, behind the baseline, scrambling, is not in a good position. Look how quickly Huber makes it into a drop shot. First ace of the match. Only her fifth of the entire tournament. This is her seventh match. 14. Wow. Well, a third of her aces in the entire tournament have come in the last two points. That's pressure serving. Maybe sending a message to Anka Huber. And Sellis is starting to pick up the ball a little better and really take some gambles. And now this is a crucial point. She's, she had seven game points in her last service game. This is her third in this one, and she has not won one of them.
Hoover showing some Jeez. emotion, very disgusted, knows she's had a lot of opportunities, and this is where it starts to play on your, your mind, the pressure of playing Monica, and she is starting to pick up the pace. So what happens is you go for a little bit more, a little bit more, and you miss. This could be a disaster game from 40 love up. sure Monica liked the service call. She thought it was long. Sorry, guys, we're going to say Silas is not only a great attacker, what a tremendous defensive player she is. And when she goes with the defense and sends it up high, Hoover did the right thing there. judge for yourselves of course with this camera angle from behind the baseline it's going to be tough to tell On the right of your screen, sitting next to Monica's dad. Again, Monica appeared to be unhappy with a service call, but now the fifth game point. You add that to the seven in the previous game. Hoover's had some chances. win that point. I mean, for Hoover to just keep letting Monica win those game points time and time again would have weighed so heavily if she had lost both those games. You felt like the pendulum was swinging, didn't you, and that Hoover had to stand up right there, and she did. So we're back to 4 all. play Sellis and it was the, the point we talked about with Ruben when they came back for a short burst at the end you have to be good for a long time to beat her not for just half an hour you've got to play brilliantly for an hour hour and a half Monica had very good footwork there the serve opened things up for her and she was very quick to move around here you can see the little slice was awkward but Monica ran around to actually hit the backhand Monica 
Bulls' first ace of the day and her 20th of the week. And uh, her fastest serve today at 148. Got it. And holds. It's five games to four. Three quarters of an hour, and Monica Sellers 5 4 against Anka Hoover. There's been a break against both the serves, but you see the advantage now that Monica has of serving first. Break Hoover here, and you take the first set. Also sitting courtside, you can see the look of determination on Monica Sellers' face, and also she's, she's so very focused. and with good reason. Uses the line well here, pushes Monica way back to the one-hander and just goes to the open court. Sounds easy, but it's not. Oh! <laughs> Rolled her eyes on that fault out by a meter and a half. Interesting. When an opponent serves a ball out by a meter and a half, the opponent goes, I think she's nervous. She's uneasy. Monica stepped right up on that second serve and punished it. Characteristic on a huge point, 15, 32 points for the set. And a pretty routine backhand, unforced error. Oh. Ship point for Silas. Monica didn't like that shot. <laughs> it, it, it's it's great. She's so focused, and yet every once in a while, she just lets you see every every part of her. <laughs> and can Hooper, Huber finally win a game on her first game point?
breathtaking some of the play today. Anka Hoover needing to go for a little bit of a walk after this point. She is just pulled all over the court. Does a great job just to get this one back. And it's a good defensive shot. But Monica takes it so early, doesn't allow Hoover the time to get back. Back to Juice. 4-5 opening set. Second set point for Monica. Three minutes. Anka can't believe it. But the critical game, when you look back, was 3 2. Seven chances for Huber to close it to 4 2. Seller survived and takes the lead. Wendy, it was uh, an outstanding set of tennis. It was, and I could actually sense something from Monica uh, when it was four games all. You could look at her face and you could just seem to feel something from her. First it was almost as if she said, okay, this is crunch time. Come on, let's step it up a little bit. That's what makes champions, Bruce. Let's not give anchor away. She came from a set behind Conchita Martinez and lost the first set to Amanda Kurtzer to get here. And that is her pattern. The end of 95, she had several matches, dropped the first set against quality players, came back and won them. Good to take your time after you've dropped the opening set. It's tough. Game Cecilis holding serve comfortably after winning the first set. It's 6-4-1 love. First game six. What a fascinating final and a really important moment now for Anka Huber. Spent a lot of emotion and energy in losing the opening set when she made most of the running. And still hasn't won a set against Monica Sellers. Has played her six times before this match. And as well as she played in that opening set, she still hasn't been able to win a single set against Sellers in her career to date.
frustration. It's important during those the 90 second change of ends after dropping that emotional first set, you, you lose the first game, you really need to regroup. And it's how you use that break can sometimes mean a difference in getting back into the match. But she needs some help, and Monica gave her a little bit of help there, but in crunch time, so few unforced errors. Anyone else, Anka Huber would have clearly been on the offensive after this shot here. It's a brilliant one down the line. Monica on the dead run, but still can hit the two hands. And it gets Anka in all sorts of trouble. First time she's missed that. Broken quickly. And uh, Wendy, it's just the start Monica was looking forward to. Well, it is very difficult when you're uh, playing in your first Grand Slam final and you've had chances in that first set. As Pam said, you've got to forget about that, regroup, start concentrating, and uh, just pretend that you're starting the match all over again. And can you feel down there that Huber is struggling with her concentration? Well, I just feel that Celis is the one who's uh, upped her concentration a little bit. You can, it's hard to explain what you can feel from Monica Celis, but there's that little extra intensity. And, uh, you know, Uncle Huber is worried a little bit. There is a force field that these champions, these number one players, put, put out, and, and the opponent definitely senses it. And it is intimidating, especially in the tight moments. It's interesting because that was what was lacking for Magasi yesterday. There was no awe at all about the champ. I think that's what left everybody a little bemused. But back here... Celis is rolling. Yeah, suddenly a point for five games in a row. Second set. At Flinders Park, Monica Sellers starting to assert her superiority on the final. 6 4 3 love. And Uncle Hoover needs to win a service game comfortably. If she's won any recently, it's been after a long, long battle. Love 
going badly, you, you look for a point that can start to turn things around, and maybe that net cord was a little bit of a break. And a great forehand touch drop volley. Only the second point she's won from the net. backhand on the full stretch that gave her time and landed just inside the baseline. You have to be able to win some of those points against Monica to stay in the match. Important for Huber, and she did it in style. Sellers had won five consecutive games. As we look out in the garden enclosure and see some of the fans who are watching it on the big screen, just outside this centre court. And they'd still be able to hear the crowd atmosphere even though they don't have a ticket to get in. So it's a great idea, this big screen. Monica Huber needs to break serve. Monica has been holding serve comfortably since she dropped in the fifth game of the first set when Huber took a break lead. This forehand winner from Huber is going to give her a little bit of an opportunity in the game. This gives her a 15-30 lead to try and get the break back. She had an opening. Huber had an opening in that rally. She pulled Monica wide to Monica's left, and then she loves the backhand down the line. Didn't go with it. You've got to be brave on the 15-30 points. Who knows, it might be Anka's last chance in the match to get back. Must take advantage of everything she can get. Break point. She's got it, oh no, out, sorry. Just long. But talk about brave. She was brave on that one. And it was just long. She knows she has to come up with something special because she is near the outside of the doubles alley. Back to Juice. That's a frustration of not only that point, but of the point before when she had the break point. Just missed.
again a little chance. In Celis's three previous service games, Hubert won just two points. So suddenly she's competitive again. Well, that was German, I think, for you got to make your returns. You got to get them in. That was just a guess. But called out. Hoover doesn't like it. Well, what's upsetting is the umpire originally went good and then a delayed out call. And no. Only once today, huh? Only once today, huh? But uh, Sellers holds serve. Hoover very unhappy. Let's just have a replay here and see what you think. Well, unfortunately, from this angle, you're not going to be able to see the side lines judge, which right here originally sing signaled good. But as you can see from there, I do think it may have been just wide. Did you get a feel for it at all, Wendy, down there? I know you're on the other side of the court. No, I, I couldn't see what uh, where the ball landed. But, uh, Anka, you know, it's the, the pressure of the moment. And uh, when you see the linesman at first call good then you already have it in your mind that you've hit a winning shot and then all of a sudden he calls out you know it's just that the moment and uh, a lot of frustration but you know when you hit the ball that close to the line all the time occasionally uh, you're going to get some calls like that well it was really the the break point in that game where Huber ripped the backhand down the line and I think she thought she had the winner it just dropped over the baseline so instead of back on serve, it's Monica Sellis. The 4-1 lead as Mark McCormick looks on. Monica Sellis' agent and turned into a, a great friend. Both Mark McCormick and his wife, Betsy Nagelson, have helped a lot during Monica's comeback. That's Zoltan Zaharski, Huber's coach, joined with Anki in the middle of 1995 and done a great job. Got her inside the top ten. Sellis has won the first point against the Huber serve five of the last six occasions. And it just keeps putting the pressure on when you love 15. Four double faults for uh, Anchor today. gamble on the second serve and that's what caused that double fault she just overhit it just a fraction Disaster for Anka Huber there. 
But you got to think about Monica Seles now. She's within one game of getting back on the winning Grand Slam track after the horrendous incident in Hamburg nearly three years ago. She's undefeated in this country. What she has had to battle in the last three years, none of us will ever know. as if she's counting them down now. Three points to go. This is where for Anka Huber it's so hard to still think you have a chance. She hasn't won a point since that incident where she got very upset at the end of the fifth game threw a record on her way to the sit down that run ends the run of eight straight So here's the moment. The first time in three years that Sellis has had championship point in a Grand Slam. I'm sure there are a few butterflies inside. She's officially back now, Pam. And do you think her parents have been through a lot of pain? See their daughter, what happened to her, and now the joy of seeing her once again winning a Grand Slam title? Her ninth. And Wendy, what uh, was a great contest. I think a match, when you look back, was... Uh, was won in the, the heart of that first set when Huber had her chance. The first set was, uh, was so good, and Huber gave her everything that she could. It's just that at four all, I could sense that Monica all of a sudden increased the intensity out there and uh, was able to step it up a little bit because she's got that added experience. And now, but Uncle Huber, it would have been a new experience for her, and perhaps she'll be able to carry that into. Uh, hopefully another Grand Slam final but because it might have seemed a little anti-climatic at the end it was just simply because Monica Sellers oh, I mean she wants it so badly and is just able to uh, come up with the goods when she needs it well she's halfway there to Martina Chrissy and Steffi with nine Grand Slam championships and she's done them in such a hurry I don't think she'll ever have to wait three more years in the rest of her career between Grand Slam wins well that's that's the thing that everyone's going to talk about. What if, what if? She hadn't lost that time. We'll take a break and be back for the presentation. Monica Sellis winning the Ford Australian Open 6-4. After her straight sets win over Anka Huber, let's join Craig Willis for the presentation. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, 128 players came here to Flinders Park in Melbourne in search of the first Grand Slam women's singles title of 1996. It has been a fortnight of terrific tennis, a fortnight of upsets, a fortnight of high energy and a fortnight of emotion. This afternoon we applaud a new singles champion on centre court and a runner-up 
who gave her all. To begin our presentation, would you please welcome the President of Tennis Australia, Mr Jeff Pollard. Your Excellencies, Mr Premier, Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we've certainly seen a great final played in fine spirit and great determination from both players and I congratulate them both. To Monica, you've maintained an incredible record here in Australia and on behalf of the people here, the people of Australia, in fact, the people worldwide, welcome back to the Winner's Circle and Grand Slam tournaments. And Enki, this may be your first Grand Slam final, but you've got a lot of friends here. You're certainly rising very quickly up towards the top couple in the world, and I'm pretty certain that you'll be a winner within the next uh, couple of Grand Slam tournaments. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank a few people responsible for bringing us the 1996 Ford Australian Open. And I do want to begin by thanking the, the Premier and the Government for the great support that they've given us to enable us to develop Stage 2, which is the wonderful feature here of the Tennis Centre. Thank you. And to you, the public that have responded in record numbers, we'll know what the final figure is tomorrow afternoon, but no matter what happens tomorrow, we'll be setting all sorts of new records. I want to say thank you to you all. I do want to recognise Channel 7, who have really given a magnificent telecast of this year's Ford Australian Open, which again has gone round the world to uh, hundreds of countries and absolutely hundreds of millions of spectators, but thank you, Channel 7. And I do want to pay particular recognition for the Tennis Australia staff, the, the Tennis Centre staff, and all the umpires and ball kids and drivers and ushers and so on that have been here, that have been here for at least 14 days and nights, from the, well before the first ball is hit to long after the last ball is hit every day and night, and to them we owe a great deal of thanks. And finally, I do want to acknowledge uh, our great sponsor, Ford, who have been with us for a long time. I think they've grown, and we've certainly seen the Ford Australian Open grow in stature during the period of their sponsorship. And it gives me great pleasure now to invite the President of Ford Australia, Mr David Morkin, to say a few words and present the cheques. Thank you, Jeff. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it's been 11 years since Ford first sponsored the Australian Open, uh, taking over from Marlborough at that time. And we've seen tremendous changes in this event since then. Of course, at that stage, it was being held in Kuyong, and we moved to the tennis centre here and we saw again a tremendous lift in the, uh, the event itself. And the stage two that we're experiencing this year for the first time, I think again, has lifted the event even further. We've seen a tremendous growth in the prize money that's being offered for this event and therefore the stature of the event both here and overseas. We know when we talk to our uh, companies overseas, we're getting tremendous recognition from the television coverage we're getting internationally from this event. Ford is well recognised as being the sponsor and we see this as just a tremendous example of what can be achieved in an event in Australia carrying the Australian message around the world. I think one of the things we've also seen in that time has been the, very, the growing up and the strength of the women's tennis and I think that was epitomised today by our two finalists in Anka and Monica and I think their game today really showed the women's tennis is alive and very well. I would like to finally just congratulate Tennis Australia on the tremendous effort they've put towards the growth of the Ford Australian Open over those 11 years. We've 
worked with them through that time and found them a very professional and a very experienced group to work with. And certainly what the, the event that we all come here and enjoy is a result of the work that they put behind it. And finally, I'd just like to say we look forward to tomorrow and then forward to next year and the years to come. Thank you very much. We'd now like to invite the runner-up in the women's singles of the 1996 Ford Australian Open, Anka Hooper, to step forward to collect her trophy and check. Okay, first of all, I want to congratulate Monica. I think she played again a great match, and the whole two weeks, I think she played great tennis again. <laughs> then I want to thank everybody who made the tournament, uh, tournament uh, possible, and yeah, the crowd was great again. I like this tournament; it's my favorite still, and I hope to come back next year and do it maybe a little bit better than this time. <laughs> presentation area of the 1996 women, women's singles champion here who at the 1996 Ford Australian Open winning for her fourth time at Monica Sellers. I left this tournament in 1993 with uh, unbelievable memories and um, the hardest thing for me at the time that I couldn't play was not being able to defend my title here from the first year from 1991. I came, first time I came to Australia I have, I've been just playing so well down here. I love the stadium, I love the fans, I love everything about Melbourne. I just It brings out some great tennis out of me. Um, and to be back here and holding back this trophy that I left with such a good memories means a lot to me. Um, I'd like to congratulate Anke to getting to the finals. It was a lucky first set that I won. So, um, and I, I would like to thank my coach who has been a major support of me through the time that I was off. And without him, I probably would not be here today. Thank you. Thank my family for being there for me always. Um, and, um, um, there have been so many people these two weeks that um, I have to thank because uh, without them I don't think any of us would be here and that's Ford for being so supportive of the Australian Open for so many years. Thank you. Um, and, um, oh boy, all the ball kids and oh, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> the umpires and, and all the volunteers and uh, especially the fans who have come out I think these whole two weeks amazing support to all the athletes and without you none of us would be here and I hope that you all come out next year also and be supportive of all of us and um, 
and it's just great to be back. I, I can't believe still that I'm here, but <laughs> it'll sink in. <laughs> Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the official part of our presentation ceremony. Once again, a round of applause, if you would, for the great spirit shown on Centre Court by Anka Hoover. And congratulations to Monica Sellers, the women's singles winner here at Flinders Park. What a great speech and uh, charismatic champion, Monica Sellers winning at Flinders Park for the fourth time. And you could see her articulate her emotions and yet then burst into the giggles. And it's sort of the old Monica as well as a result of what's happened the last few years. And Dad and Mum who have been with her all the way. Her Dad's a great sport. And uh, for Anka, not today, but uh, as Monica said, it was a pretty tight old first set. Monica Sellis winning her fourth Ford Australian Open and in the nine years of Flinders Park Steffi Graf has now won four times Monica four times and Mary Pierce the other well she stimulates a lot of people and inspires a lot of people right around the world including a Melbourne group of musicians the young elders who have written a song in tribute to Monica